Today I'm talking about this high yield interest rate environment we find ourselves in. I also want to talk a little about money market accounts and dig into the details of Vanguard's federal money market account, ticker symbol VFMXX. And stick around to the end because I'll tell you exactly where I'm planning to move my excess cash in this current interest rate environment. I don't know if you've noticed it or not, but interest rates are way higher than they've been in the last 15 years or so. I've got this high yield savings account at Ally Bank, and I've been pleased to watch the interest rate in that account climb up to 4.25%. But meanwhile, right under my nose, there's this sleepy old Vanguard money market account that I've never given much of a thought about before, and it's yielding about 1% higher than that Ally account. 5.28% as I record this. Let's back up a second and put this interest rate situation into context. Check out this historical chart of the federal funds rate. We can see that from mid 2008 to early 2022, this rate has been at or below 2.5%. This is low, and historically speaking, unusually low because most of the time, well, it's been higher than that. And this federal funds rate is an important benchmark in financial markets. It's central to the monetary policy in the United States and it influences a wide range of market interest rates. Basically, other interest rates track with the Fed funds rate. So rates have been low for pretty much my entire investing life. Maybe yours too. And now they're going back up, but they're still pretty chill by historical standards. One result of these higher rates is the effect on boring things that no one likes to think about, like US treasuries, bonds, notes, savings accounts, and even money market accounts, yes, these things are suddenly interesting. For example, now that interest rates have risen, a money market account likely pays you more interest than a high yield savings account. It wasn't like that before. I always looked at money market accounts and thought, what's the point of these ancient things? They seem more complicated than a high yield savings account and with no additional benefit. But now I'm looking your way, money market accounts. I see you, but hold on. What is a money market account? Well, we can think of it as a type of savings account. In fact, you can get one at your local bank just like a regular savings account, and in that case they function very similarly to a savings account. They're even both insured with the same FDIC insurance. But unlike savings accounts, money market accounts will often come with check writing privileges and maybe even their own debit card. But you can also buy into a money market mutual fund through a brokerage, such as Vanguard, Fidelity, Schwab, etc. In this case, they're not insured by the FDIC, instead they're covered under the Securities Investor Protection Corporation, or SIPC. Money market funds invest in very low risk assets like treasury bonds, CDs, or short term high quality corporate bonds with maturities that are less than a year. Money market funds through your broker may be government funds which invest only in assets that are backed by the federal government, for example treasury bonds or they may invest in other types of assets like municipal bonds or short-term high-quality corporate bonds. These funds are structured to hopefully not lose money, at least not in a nominal sense. Their share price stays at $1 as much as possible. While all money market funds have the same price, $1, their yields will vary. To see what a money market fund is currently paying, we need to look at the seven-day SEC yield. For example, a $10,000 investment in a money market fund with a 5% SEC yield would yield $500 on an annual basis. All right, now let's turn our attention to Vanguard's federal money market fund, VFMXX. This is a government fund and its seven day SEC yield is 5.28%. And that yield is the dividend after the fund's expenses, which is 0.11% in this case. So the fund yields 5.28% net of fees. And because VFMXX is a mutual fund, it pays dividends to you as a shareholder, not interest. That's because even though it receives interest-based income, the payouts to shareholders are dividends. And for tax purposes, the income will be shown on a 1099 div form. But don't get any big ideas about paying less tax Unfortunately, because the money market income comes from interest inside the fund, the dividends paid out from the fund are never qualified. That means you'd pay your normal tax rate, not the reduced rate for long-term capital gains or qualified dividends. 
Anyway, VFMXX is currently yielding 5.28% and has a low expense ratio of 0.11%. And I already have some cash in this account, just naturally from having different accounts with Vanguard. But the question is, should I put more of my cash in this account? In fact, should I move all of my cash from my Ally Savings account into this account? Because I have a few places available to me that are paying a nice yield right now. My bank, Ally, has a savings account yielding 4.25%, and that's where I have most of my cash right now. Ally also has a money market account that yields a little more, 4.4%, but I'd have to open a separate account to get that money market rate, and frankly, it's not worth the effort for an extra 0.15%. Then there's Robinhood Gold. If you have Robinhood Gold, which costs $5 a month, you can get 4.9% on your cash there, and I do have a little cash there because of my options activity in that account. But there's also Vanguard's federal money market account, good old VFMXX, which is yielding that 5.28% and which also happens to be the default settlement account at Vanguard. And that means that when you deposit money into your Vanguard brokerage account or sell an asset in that account, the cash is collected in this money market account for you automatically. And you can actually change your settlement fund if you're so inclined. Uh, but I'm not so inclined. All right, so I've got these three places to park my cash that have decent interest rates. Ally Savings, Robinhood Gold, and VFMXX at Vanguard. For the sake of comparison, $10,000 in each of these accounts would yield $425 at Ally, $490 Robinhood Gold, and $528 at Vanguard. The only good reason that I wouldn't move all my extra cash to VFMXX is speed of access. With my high yield savings account at Ally, I can instantly move cash back and forth from savings to checking or checking to savings, and I never worry about overdrafting my checking account because money is automatically moved from the savings account as needed to prevent overdrafting. So I need to keep some reserve in this savings account just to keep my day-to-day -day expenses covered. But anything truly extra that I don't plan to use for a while, well that can be safely moved to Vanguard. Basically, I'm thinking of an emergency fund or cash that I think of as my emergency fund can be moved to Vanguard. So that's my solution. Keep enough in the Ally Savings account to cover about three months of expenses, park the rest at VFMXX, and mentally separate that cash in VFMXX from the rest of my investments at Vanguard, making it a true emergency fund. An emergency fund that yields 5.28%. Yeah, I like that. All right, that's what I have for you in this video. If you would be so kind as to give this video a like, I would appreciate that. And subscribe to my channel for more videos on saving, investing, and early retirement. Thanks for watching.